Hey, what's happening, Nation? It's Sun Joku. We're switching gears tonight. We're going to talk about how freaking disgusting this offense is going to be next year. I cannot wait to see this offense hit the field with the new pieces and additions that we have brought on. This is by far the best surrounding cast Derek Carr has had through his career. And I am extremely confident that he's going to be able to exploit every single aspect. Of so we're going to jump into it. We're going to break it down. If you are new to the channel, please do think about subscribing. It really does help me out and keep me growing. But let's just start with the running backs. We have 2,000 yard running backs on this team right now. You cannot ask for anything better than that. And whether our number three be Jalen Richard, Regis, or Groshek, honestly, I will take any one of those three, especially because we're going to keep Alec Ingold on this roster, who is arguably the best fullback in football right now. I really think the running back room is completely solidified at this point, regardless in what direction that we do go. Having Drake and Josh and Ingold all on this team together in the same backfield is insane. Like, truly insane. So we are completely set there. And then we'll move into the tight end room. You got Waller. You got Foster Moreau. You either got Carrier, or I really think it's going to end up being Bushman. We'll just have to see how that shakes out. But Waller and Foster could seriously finish next season as the number one tight end duo in football. I know a lot of people agree with me as far as Foster Moreau is concerned that that kid is something truly special and he's going to do great things in this league. And Waller is Waller. I'm not sure what his injury is. It's kind of been undisclosed, but nobody's making too big of a deal out of it. Hopefully he just takes his time and gets back into the rotation. I'm not worried about him at all. Those two together on the field are going to, one, be opening up holes, and two, they'll be able to stretch the field, man. Even Foster Moreau can get behind the defender or hit those seam routes and just be wide open and gone. Carr loves his tight ends and he's going to take advantage of both of these guys. And now I want to jump into the two things that could end up being a little bit detrimental to this offense, but they both have the potential to be freaking awesome. But until we see it, we cannot say that it is going to be. We'll start with the offensive line. They have the potential to be something very, very special. They are young, they are fast, they have one solid veteran kind of holding everything together. But these guys have to be able to step up and prove that they can solidify this front five. Our offensive line in the past has been a bunch of big names that cost us a lot of money, but they never freaking played together, ever. There was zero chemistry across that offensive line because somebody was either banged up or somebody had COVID, and it was some bullshit every single week with this offensive line. I think our offensive line, when we had our front five that everybody loved so much that we were paying out the ass for, only played together in back-to-back -back weeks two times the whole time that we had that offensive line together that's complete shit if these young kids can stay together stay healthy and develop that bond dude i'm telling you right now the sky is the limit for them and we can keep these dudes locked down on this team for a good minute i'm honestly super excited about this offensive line i do think they're going to hold up i do think they're going to work wonders in the run game and i think they're going to buy Carr and his quick ass release enough time to be able to pick his target and then continually move the ball down the field I know a lot of people out there doubt doubt me about this offensive line, but we've seen flashes from James, and he looked damn good. Leatherwood has to be able to hold up. Good has proven himself. I don't care what anybody says. Good has proven himself that he can play guard or tackle across this line on either side, and he's going to be able to solidify that spot. And then Colton Miller is Colton Miller, man. I was excited as hell when we got him. He had a rough rookie season, but the kid has progressed and locked down that left tackle position. Richie Incognito, from what I've read through camp, has been put on his ass a few times. But I really like Simpson coming in behind him. I think Richie's just getting back into the swing of things. I'm not worried about him at all. I think this offensive line should hold up, but it should be pretty damn good. The next group I want to talk about is the wide receiver room that we do have on this team. I think it is a better group than Carr has ever had. And I'm talking about Crabtree and Cooper together. And I both understand that both those dudes had 1,000 yards that season when Carr went off. I really think that Edwards and Ruggs could do the same damn thing, but I don't think this offense is set up like that at all anymore, so I'm not expecting that. But I'm still expecting these outside wide receivers to make way more of an impact than they have over the past two seasons. And I think a big reason of why they have not is just because they have not had the real opportunities. Both of them ended up getting hurt as far as Ruggs and Edwards are concerned. They both had limited play time. Carr never really seemed to build a rapport with either one of them, which kind of sucked. And then when Edwards went down, Nelson Aguilar ended up coming in and kind of stealing the show as far as being like that deep ball threat that Carr ended up hitting streaking down the field. I think you're going to see a real heavy rotation at this wide receiver position. I think you're going to see a hell of a lot of different personnel put out onto the field in different packages. You're going to see 
Waller playing the outside. You're going to see John Brown playing the slot. You're going to see Drake coming out of the backfield and then sticking into that slot position. You're going to see all sorts of crazy shit. You're going to see a lot of two tight end packages. And it's a two tight end package that I'm in right now. And even with this, there's only one wide receiver on the field right now. But this package still looks disgusting because it's all about pre-snap motion to get somebody wide open and just be able to read the coverage. And it's going to be things like this that we can do with this offense that... Not only one will show Carr exactly what the defense is going to do so he can make his pre-snap adjustments and then just air the damn ball out or end up running it down somebody's throat. It's also going to put our playmakers in positions to actually get the ball quick and make some big damn explosive plays. That's really how Gruden's offense is supposed to work. It's going to run it down your throat and then all of a sudden he's going to end up hitting a five-yard little slant that goes for a touchdown. And then every now and again, Carr's going to drop back and just air one out just to keep you honest throughout a game. We've seen it time and time again. We've seen it for a few straight seasons now, so we know what's coming, but now we have the pieces to where I really think that Gruden's going to be able to run the offense that he's been wanting to run. And I'm really hoping that I'm right about this because I really want to see this team go to the next level. If this defense can step up and get into that top 15 and this offense can stay where it was as far as last season, even though we have so much better talent surrounding Carr right now, I do not think it's going to be an issue at all. Let me know your guys' thoughts, man. If you cannot tell, I am already jacked to shit about this season, and I cannot wait to keep doing this going forward and just seeing who our actual starters are going to be. I want to see what happens during these preseason games. Who ends up being that dude that just shows up and makes like the big impact that everybody starts talking about all of a sudden that nobody was really expecting to? Groshek. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I really think that kid might have a shot at just doing something during the preseason to where everybody jumps on his trade all of a sudden. I just want to see how it plays out. I think we have a ton of talent this season on both sides of the ball, and I really think we have a legitimate shot, even though there's a lot of people that tell me I'm crazy and this team's going to end up being 8-8 eight and eight, or 8-9 eight and nine now, or just some kind of crazy number. I really think we have at least 10 wins this season, like that at the low mark. I think we can go as high as 12. I think if we can get to that 11 or 12 mark, we're definitely in the playoffs. If you're at that 12 or above mark, we got a shot at winning this division. I'll tell you right now, we almost beat Kansas City twice last year. And if we can do it twice this season, it's going to end up giving us the upper hand, give us that number one seed. So call me crazy if you want to, man, but I'm going to back this team until I die, and I'm going to back every single person on this roster until they're not on it. So until the next time, guys, I'm Sun Joku. Thank you so much for checking it out. I really appreciate it. We will catch you guys on the next one.